What's up, guys? Welcome back to Let's Play Zoids vs. 3! Oh, Naomi Flugel. The hottest character in all of Zoids, because as you guys know, I'm a sucker for redheads. Anyway, uh, her and Brad are teaming up yet again to take us on with their respective uh, custom red gun sniper and blade ligers, which obviously we're going to be very prepared for that. The only thing I really want to get from now on for the Shadow Fox is a missile launcher, and there's a very good reason for that. It's also one of the things that makes it um, uh, more utilitarian than the, um, or more versatile, I should say, than the Shadow, I'm um, sorry, the Lightning Sykes, is the fact that you can equip it with different weapons. As I said before in the previous video, you can equip it with different primary weapons and then have the option for missile launchers too, which is very helpful in this game, especially with all the flying zoids, which we'll be seeing a lot more of later, unfortunately. So, and the, the Lightning Sykes is great and everything, but it cannot equip, um, it cannot equip these types of weapons. It cannot equip um, a different primary or a uh, missile launcher. So, um, this fight is pretty much the same as it was in Battle Legends, except this map is just one big corridor. It's kind of the inner base type of map. And I have no idea why they gave us such a tiny cramped map for this, but it really sucks because there's not a lot of room to maneuver here. We're really um, at risk for being pulverized by the Blade Liger if we're not careful. But we'll be fine. Um, Naomi's Gun Sniper is absolutely useless in this map. Like, it does nothing. It has, like, one primary with its little... Um, wrist cannon things, and it has an underbarrel cannon, that's literally it. It's actually doing a fair amount of damage with melee to me, which is kind of annoying. I need to get away from it, which Shadow Fox is very good at. And we're actually doing more sniping than it ever will by completely annihilating it with a dual sniper rifle. Of course, it is a small target. And the Blade Liger has utterly defeated my partner, so we'll be getting no points for that, unfortunately. Yeah, Leon's Blade Liger is a top tier Blade Liger uh, as far as stats go, but it does not have any attack boosters. So, that's a shame. Still my favorite Zoid ever though, it's just, unfortunately he doesn't have much to uh, threaten us with. Obviously I'll be getting a Blade Liger eventually, maybe not in the tournament mode right away unless you guys really want to see it. Um, start requesting some Zoids that you want to see in the Chaotic Century Tournament because um, the only thing I really had in mind to buy was a Koenig Wolf, and um, I didn't have anything else um, really that I wanted to use quite yet. Um, but I'll demonstrate any Zoid you guys want to see because this Let's Play is still in production at least. Alright, so now we're going to be fighting Lena, and I cannot remember his name at all. And uh, he has a uh, Terra Striker. He has... A heavily modified Terra Striker that has uh, um, additional weapons on it that you would not find in the stock model, including some very dangerous missile launchers. Nothing quite like those ridiculous torpedo underground things that um, Zabet had, but still pretty threatening. So just like before, we need to take that thing out as fast as possible, and that's what the missiles are for too. I may be able to hit it successfully with the dual sniper rifle and not have to worry about it, but yeah, you can see those big cannons on its wings there. Those are not stock, definitely. Terrace is pretty much a, uh, a low-tier airborne zoid. At least as far as... Whoa! I just got a hailfire from Lena's D-Bison. I did not expect that. Yeah, the, the, as I said before, um, the thing about this game is all homing projectiles are a lot more effective, so the D-Bison is a lot better and um, missiles are a lot better, which is why we had to buy some missiles to help us with the flying zoids. They don't seem to be doing a very good job of flying. They're just kind of skimming the ground. And... Honestly, if you watch the anime, the way that uh, flying zoids behave, especially like the Storm Sorter, is uh, they are basically like real aircraft, and they are incredibly fast, they break the sound barrier, they're basically like fighter jets. And uh, for a ground vehicle like a, you know, a tank or artillery vehicle to fight a fighter jet is completely impractical and unrealistic. And yet somehow in the anime, um, the ground zoids usually, at least the ones controlled by the main character, somehow manage to best them. And it's usually because the flying zoid pilot does something stupid, like try to attack them towards the ground. Or in the case of the storm sorter, the storm sorter had a blade on its head, I think, which made it completely badass but it also um, left it vulnerable to being attacked by the Liger Zero from the ground. 
or whatever other, whatever other Zoid have you. Yeah, the D-Bison was a little bit more threatening than it was in the previous game. The D-Bison, even though it was very powerful uh, when properly used in the anime, really not a big threat in Battle Legends at all. Alright, looks like Lena decided to upgrade, rightfully so, and so did Bit. So now we're going to be going up against the Liger Zero Schneider and uh, Lena's Gun Sniper, which is a lot more decked out and powerful than Naomi's. Although, I'd still take Naomi's Gun Sniper any day. Because it's red, and it's hers. Lena's Gun Sniper is pretty ridiculous, though. It has two Gatling units on it and a bunch of other things and completely defeats the purpose of the term Sniper. It's it's absurd. Like it, it definitely fits Lena's character because it's ape shit. It's just absolutely bonkers, and um, it's actually going to be a lot more threatening than the Schneider is if at, at long long range at least because it has, does have a missile pod. Um, it has a better missile pod than what we have actually. And uh, if I can get my um, ally with the cannon tortoise to start doing some bombardment here, then maybe we'll be okay. But yeah, the. Uh, I don't know why you would ever have two Gatling units at the same time, though, because you would never be able to fire both of them at once in this game because you can only, you only select one or the other. I think the Lena special um, arrangement there is actually a unique weapon for the Gun Sniper, and um, there's actually another uh, weapon rack that the Gun Sniper can have, which is one of the weapons you can get for the Shadow Fox. Um, that I could have had it during the campaign of... Uh, actually, it might have been the one I used during the campaign of Battle Legends where I bashed the Shadow Fox so bad and said how terrible it was um, because it just was not very effective against those lightning sykes and it was just that was a ground pounders game and this was not the zoid that was for that um, without the ability to move around or without a good weapon like the dual sniper rifle. It was either that or that crappy little Vulcan gun. Somebody pointed out in the comments too how the uh, Vulcan gun on the, sh on the Shadow Fox in the anime was broken because it just e every little individual shot would cripple a zoid and it could just like it could just um, spray through a crowd of Zoids and knock them all down, but in, in this, obviously, it's a lot more, a lot more balanced. Oh dear, here we go. This is this is terror mode right here. So if you guys remember, this was a very very hard fight in Battle Legends, and it's also it's even harder here. Um, we're up against Harry and Mary Champ and their uh, Dark Horn and Iron Kong, respectively. And um, Harry's Iron Kong and Mary, or I'm sorry, I already messed it up. I told myself which Zoid was which and then I messed it up as soon as I say it out loud. Harry's Dark Horn and Mary's Iron Kong are very heavily modified and powerful. I believe um, Mary's Iron Kong is the most powerful Iron Kong you can get as far as stats goes and also has some ridiculous weapons. It's the most dangerous Zoid um, probably in this whole tournament mode. Um, or at least, yeah, in this, whole, in this whole tournament at least, the most dangerous thing about it is arguably it has a new type of homing missile which it pretty much just hits you if it feels like it. And um, it does a lot of damage and it actually was able to defeat me before I even managed to get within a firing distance of these Zoids in one of my test runs. So yeah, it's very powerful. And um, I blame id Software for this. I love them to death. id Software is still like my favorite shooter company, but they have brought cancer upon the world of shooting games with the homing missile. Um, every game that has them, they are terrible, and I don't think I talk, I complained about them quite enough in um, Battle Legends because they weren't they weren't as bad back then. They really weren't, but obviously in this game, they're just horrible. And I'm actually doing a, this is a deliberate strategy here of trying to stay close to the Iron Kong to um, where the arcing trajectory of that missile, it goes up into the air, then back down towards whatever zone it's targeting, and if I'm too close to it, it won't be able to get, uh, oh, my partner's still alive, won't be able to get a good shot on me. So I'm pretty sure, um, Harry's Iron, um, I'm messing up again, Harry's Darkhorn has one of those beam railguns and a Gatling unit, um, yeah, yeah. Um, it's actually a really good setup for a Dark Horn, as I established during Battle Legends, when I use that Dark Horn to go up against the uh, Seismosaurus. Which I don't think I'll be attempting again, unless you guys really want to see it. Or if you guys want me to do a boss rush with another Zoid. Um, but yeah, uh, Harry's Dark Horn 
Really? I would highly recommend it. I would never actually use a Iron Kong in a tournament, but I still think they're pretty good. Your worst enemy with a Zoid like that is essentially the physics and the camera, because being a you know a melee fighter or a ground pounder where you're just all up in their face, you succumb to problems with hit detection and the camera and collision detection against other Zoids and just getting caught up on things and being really inconvenient. This game is not great, I should say, for that. It's it's a very flawed engine and they've done nothing to improve it over the course of the drill of the trilogy. Well, actually I don't own the first one, I should be honest with you guys, so I'm not sure about that. Alright, so this next battle I um, looked up who these I looked up who these characters are, but I can't remember their names now. Um, it's a Storm Sorter and a Genosaur, which as we established in the previous game, the Genosaur is very good, but I for some reason have a habit of wiping the floor with them when they really deserve better. Um, the Storm Sorter is definitely my favorite flying Zoid. It's it's badass. Um, I've not gotten a chance to use one yet in Versus 3, but I will definitely be doing it before um, I have the opportunity to show it off. So I really can't say for sure what it has as far as weapons go, but uh, it, it definitely doesn't seem like it's much of a threat. It's just very hard to hit as all the flying zoids are. I'm going to try to use my missiles to get a few good shots in on it. It does not seem like it wants to be in range though. There we go. Yeah, at least the flying zoids fortunately don't have a lot of good defense or anything like that. Yeah, I'm thinking of getting the twin pulse cannon there on the Genosaur for... Um, my uh, Tonig Wolf instead of using the dual sniper rifle. It's a very good weapon. It's it's not quite as much damage as the uh, dual sniper rifle. It still aims the same way, but I don't know. I just figured I would get something different and mix things up a bit because the dual sniper rifle is just so abusive. I really need to do something different to uh, add some variety to this game. But this was just a way for me to, you know, get the ball rolling so to speak with this let's play and uh, to totally break the game using the shadow fox which I know a lot of people wanted to see all right time for the final battle and of course it just like in uh, battle legends it's gonna be against the Liger zero panzer and the uh, berserk fury almost a geno breaker but um, yeah, this, this fight is hard. This fight is very hard. Um, in fact, I really can't say for sure which Zoid I'm more afraid of because normally it would be the uh, the Panzer, but in this game, for some reason, the uh, Berserk Fury managed to KO me twice during my test runs. So, yeah, it's pretty dangerous. The, its main problem is it, it's actually pretty fast for how big it is. It's a very large Zoid. So as you can see there, he was able to intercept me with his melee attack as I was trying to make a pass by with my boosters. And uh, if I don't get away quickly enough, he's going to get me again. I'm taking heavy missile fire from the Panzer. And uh, hopefully my speed will be enough to outrun the Panzer's bombardment for now, and I'll deal with the Panzer later. Um, the Panzer, uh, as we've established, is a heavy artillery uh, modification for the Liger Zero. It's very slow, it's very clunky, you can barely jump in the thing. But, it, my god, does it have firepower. Like, it has so many weapons. I think he actually, like, overclocked some of the uh, motors in the Liger Zero's legs trying to get the thing to walk and had to discard the armor halfway through the fight during the anime. But, um, such is not the case in the game. Okay, our partner just got annihilated, so it's just me and the, the uh, Panzer now. I demonstrated the Panzer, like all the other Liger Zero uh, attachments in uh, Battle Legends, but I'd be happy to do it again here in Versus 3. If you guys want to see a particular Liger Zero variant over the other in a particular order, then also just feel free to let me know because I've got to budget these things out as they're all very expensive. Some, in some cases, not even rightfully so. Like I don't know why you would pay so much for the Jaeger. I mean, it's not even all that good. It has great mobility, and obviously the um, the um, the Liger Zero on its own is pretty mobile as well. But no good weapons really. It still says you are the great warrior. That still pisses me off. 
But you know what? That's just the translation, and I guess. It wasn't a localization issue with the uh, Bat Legends then, because Versus 3 still has it. Yay, we won the tournament mode as the Shadow Fox, and you guys got to see the uh, revenge of the Shadow Fox yet again as he's um, redeemed himself from the horrible, horrible rap that I gave him in Battle Legends. So now we'll be moving on to the Chaotic Century tournament where I'll buy a new Zoid and use that. Unless you guys um, want to see a particular Zoid, let me know now because it'll be a couple days before I record that.